Good evening, and welcome to Daily Devotions with Incarnation Lutheran Church. My name is Jennifer Barker, and most of you know that I have started seminary. And this devotion is based on one of the assignments that I received while I was there. The class is Lutheran Confessions, so it's basically what do we believe, and why do we believe it, and what did Martin Luther say? And one of the things that we're studying right now is the Augsburg Confession which is the document that Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon wrote to take to the Diet of Worms when the emperor called them to profess their faith. And basically the document is meant to take Martin Luther's 95 theses and explain how those teachings can be brought into the universal church. They didn't want a division in the church. They wanted one church for everyone. And as we all know, that didn't work out. So anyways, um, the assignment was to take one of the articles in the Augsburg Confession and tie it into real life today. So I chose article eight, which states, part of it states, the Christian church is, properly speaking, nothing else than the assembly of all believers and, sa and saints. So what does this mean? Does it mean that church has to be inside of a building with pews and an altar and a choir? I, I, I don't think so. Uh, Philip Melanchthon and Martin Luther posited that the church happens wherever and whenever a group of believers congregate together to faithfully celebrate the gospel. So it could be basically anywhere. It could be at our church. It could be in the park. It could be at your dinner table. It could be walking or going to the food pantry. It could be going to interfaith. Church can be anywhere that all of us come together. It can even be online. So it's interesting. As I was growing up, um, I knew several people that that didn't believe in organized religion. They were Christians. They believed in Jesus as our savior. They read the Bible. They, um, and they lived a faithful life, but they didn't necessarily subscribe to the traditional model of organized religion. So question is, what then was their version of church? And for them, it was, you know, having conversations around the dinner table, it was reading the Bible, and it was a generalized trust in the grace of Jesus Christ. No buildings, no pews, no choir. And as I was working on this assignment, I went for a walk because my brain was full and I needed to do something else. So I went for a walk and I saw a group of people that were sitting in the appropriately socially distanced circle. And there was about 10 of them and they were discussing what something that had happened on Sunday at church. And when I went for this walk, I hadn't yet decided what I wanted my assignment to be on, but just seeing that group of people sitting there together made me realize that this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fact that church is the people within the community. It's the people living out the gospel. It's the people having faith in Jesus. That's what church is. So I got to thinking also about that, about those 10 or so people in that socially distant circle, that church is the people within the community. It's the people living out the gospel. It's the people having faith in Jesus. That's what church is. So I got to thinking also about that, about those 10 or so people in that socially distant circle. And I thought, I wonder how many of them are truly Christians. And I thought, well, does it really matter if they are? And according to Article 8 of the Augsburg Confessions, it doesn't matter. 
It states that Christians, hypocrites, and even public sinners remain among the righteous. And that doesn't, and regardless of who is in your circle of your church, it doesn't matter. It's still church. Everyone is still there celebrating the gospel. And everyone there is forgiven and is righteous because Jesus died for our sins and God says that he will love us. In other words, the effectiveness of the church doesn't depend on the attendees, but rather on the grace and faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. So church happens among believers through the Holy Spirit. And given this pandemic, this is evident more now than ever. When the pandemic first hit and we all struggled with what is church going to look like? How are we going to do this? You know, who does what? Do we just videotape it and send it out? Do we do it live? What platform do we use? And then the question became, you know, what do we do about the Eucharist? How do we do that? And guess what? We figured it out because we all realized the church is the people, not the building. Church is the grace and faith that we all have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's that place where we all come together to celebrate the gospel and to love our neighbors as ourselves and to do the things that God asks us to do and live our best lives as the Christians that we are. So all of you are church. Everyone listening tonight to this devotion is church. Everyone that goes to our virtual church on Sunday is church. Your neighbor is part of your church. Your coworkers are part of your church. So you get to be church wherever you are and whenever you want to be. You are church. You are the love of God, loving your neighbor as yourself. a pretty powerful thing. So let's all be church wherever we are together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every opportunity to be your church in this world. Through faith and grace, we are forgiven. Remind us to celebrate your love wherever we are and whenever we want. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.